M87 is a supermassive black hole in the nearby radio galaxy. M87 has the second largest black hole shadow size among all black hole candidates and is one of the most important targets for the EHT collaboration. EHT collaboration involving over 18 institutions and 300 researchers primarily focuses on the science in the vicinity of the black hole. EHT collaboration constructs the Earth scale telescope by using the worldwide radio telescopes. In 2017, we used the eight telescopes from global, globally uh, six uh, locations, and in 2018, Greenland Telescope enhanced the observation. Researching region in the vicinity of the black hole is essential to uh, comprehend how they attract the surrounding plasma, form the jet, and verifying the general reactivity. Back to 2017, Event Horizon Telescope observed a nearby active galactic nuclei called M87. This image revealed a bright ring surrounding a darker central region, this black hole shadow. This structure confirmed the predictions of general relativity by Albert Einstein. It, and it was the first time ever we actually saw a supermassive black hole. In 2018, Event Horizon Telescope observed again M87, but this time Greenland Telescope participated in the observations, promising a higher fidelity image. So if you look at the image from 2018, what we see, what is remarkable is that the size is exactly the same as what we saw in 2017 of the ring of black hole. So why is it important that the size is exactly the same? So that the matter is going around a, uh, the black hole of M87, it's going accreting very slow. and over the lifespan of humans or, or the human history, uh, it's not going to considerably increase uh, in terms of its mass. And general relativity predicts that the, the size of the ring is only primarily dependent on its mass. So it's exactly what we predict and we see that in our results. And that's pretty exciting. Other things that we see in the black hole is that in 2017, the position angle or the brightest spot or the region was somewhere around here, but it moved by 30 degrees. So why? This is important that it should change, or do we really expect it to change? So even though size of the black hole is supposed to of this black hole is supposed to stay the same, it's not necessarily true for the matter that is around it. So if the matter keeps up wobbling around the black hole, and uh, so if it wobbles, we can use the how it wobbles to to test our theories uh, of magnetic field and plasma around the black hole. So the black hole, we can think of it as a spinning top, and from the brightest region, we can see uh, or predict what is the axis of the stop where it's rotating. And it's pretty uh, exciting to see that it's consistent with the large scale jet of the black hole. In the past, we have used two or three methods to make the images of black holes. Then we release another images of Sagittarius A star, which is another black hole. We, we introduce new imaging methods. We are using now all of these methods that we have developed. And it's important to use different imaging methods because we can put independent uh, constraints and, and check our consistency between the, our results. We have five methods that have, we have used. Out of these five, four are done in-house at IASSIC and are led by individually each of the persons at IASSIC. For example, Kotaro Moriyama, he has led one of the imaging methods called Smiley. LJ Cho, he has led actually two methods, which is uh, EHT imaging and, and DIFMAP. And myself, I have led the Comrade imaging, which is a Bayesian approach to do it. In the past, we have observed in 2017 and we released an image. We also have now image from 2018, the observations from there. Uh, we have also taken observations in 2021, 2022, and we have also forthcoming observations in 2024. So why is it important to keep observing this black hole again and again? So one thing is that the black hole is going to change over the years and we are going to make a dynamical study of how it's change, changing and, and put more constraint on our theories. That's one thing. So, the other thing is that we're adding more and more telescopes to our array of EHT. These collective telescopes form a big Earth-sized telescope and there are currently holes in it. So if we add more telescopes, our, our images and data is going to get better and better. And the other thing is that not only telescopes, we're going to add more frequency. So we'll have more information over the different wavelengths. So we can do a more enhanced study of the magnetic field because of the frequencies. 
but we can also do a dynamical study because we are observing again and again. ¿Cómo ha mejorado el EHT desde la primera imagen del agujero negro que obtuvimos eh, eh, y publicamos allá por 2019? El EHT es un instrumento que continúa en innovación. Continuamos mejorando, añadiendo nuevas antenas, añadimos también un ancho de banda más, eh, más grande e incluso hemos eh, añadido observaciones a más altas frecuencias. Y todo esto nos permite tener imágenes con una mayor sensibilidad, con lo cual podemos observar detalles más sutiles en la imagen y sobre todo tener más resolución, lo que nos permite acotar mejor los parámetros de los agujeros negros y de esa manera, por tanto, hacer unos test más precisos de relatividad general. Por tanto, ya eh, tenemos una segunda imagen de M87, hemos obtenido imagen, la primera imagen del agujero negro en el centro de nuestra galaxia, ¿Qué nos espera del EHT? ¿Qué va a hacer el EHT en los próximos 5 o 10 años? Pues eh, nos, seguimos mejorando el instrumento. Añadimos más antenas, eh, hacemos observaciones con ancho de banda más grande, con más, más frecuencias y en particular estamos eh, desde el Instituto de Astrofísica de Andalucía eh, liderando el proyecto de añadir una nueva antena del EHT que estará instalada en las Islas Canarias. Esta nueva antena que estará gestionada por España será esencial para mejorar las observaciones del de agujero negro en M87 y en el centro de nuestra galaxia. Pero no, no nos quedamos ahí, tenemos proyectos, de hecho acabamos de enviar un, un, una propuesta a NSF de Estados Unidos de, más de, 100, de cerca de 100 millones de dólares para añadir más antenas a la red, no solo en España, sino también en México, en Chile y en Estados Unidos. Y más allá, incluso estamos uh, eh, desarrollando un proyecto con NASA para poner una antena en órbita. Es el denominado Event Horizon Explorer, que, que unirá la señal de una antena en órbita con todas las antenas que se encuentran en Tierra. Y de esa manera, no, por primera vez podemos ver ese anillo de luz aumentada producida por el material que está justo en el entorno del horizonte de sucesos del agujero negro. Nuestro grupo en el, del Even Horizon Telescope en el Instituto de Astrofísica de Andalucía lidera dentro de la colaboración del EHT el proyecto para obtener las primeras películas de agujeros negros. Con estas primeras películas te, podamos a poder entender cómo realmente funcionan estos agujeros negros y cómo es posible extraer energía de la rotación de los agujeros, de los agujeros negros y producir estos 10 inmensos de, 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 10 de partículas que viajan acerca de la velocidad de la luz y se extienden más allá de la propia galaxia que los contiene, como el que vemos en M87. The image of M87 supermassive black hole by the Event Horizon Telescope is not just an image. It's a milestone in a modern astronomy, as it was the first time to actually see a black hole. And also we realized that with a combination of state-of-the-art technology and instrumentation together with collaboration between scientists all around the world, we can achieve things that are considered impossible. Stay tuned because the best has yet to come.